What are graph decompositions? That's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson. This is a viewer requested video. I always appreciate those viewer requests, so be sure to leave yours down in the comments. This is the first graph we'll be looking at, and it is called G. Suppose we wanted to break this graph down to decompose it. How would we do that? One way that might jump out at us is to decompose this graph into this piece and this piece. So let's try that. If we do that, we end up getting these two subgraphs. Let's call the first one H1 and the second one H2. So now we have decomposed the graph G into this subgraph and this subgraph. They both happen to be four cycles. Now is this a valid decomposition of the graph G? Well, it turns out that it is. That's because, for starters, H1 and H2 are both subgraphs of G. Another important fact that has to be true is that when we union these two subgraphs together, we get the original graph G. Again, that is true with these two subgraphs. If we union them together, we get the original graph G. And then lastly, they have no edges in common. They have this vertex C in common, but they have no edges in common. All of those facts together mean that this is a decomposition of G. In particular, we would say that this set containing these two subgraphs is a decomposition of G. So now that we've seen a concrete example of a decomposition, let's check out the actual definition. So here it is, a decomposition of a graph G is a set of edge disjoint subgraphs of G that we'll call H1, H2, and so on, all the way up to the last subgraph, Hn, such that the union of all of those subgraphs, Hi, is equal to the original graph, G. So, to decompose a graph into subgraphs, those subgraphs need to be edge disjoint, which means they have no edges in common, and when we union all of those subgraphs together, we need to get the original graph, G. So now, hopefully we can see exactly why this was a valid decomposition. As a counterexample, if H1 didn't have this edge joining G and C, then this would no longer be a decomposition of G, because when we union these subgraphs together, we'd be missing an edge. As another example, if our subgraph H2 had included this edge that joins C and G, then this would not have been a valid decomposition, because these two subgraphs are no longer edge disjoint. They have this edge in common, the edge that joins C and G. All right, now hopefully the definition of graph decomposition is clear. Let's quickly check out another example. So here we've got another graph, and since our previous graph is now out of sight and out of mind, let's just call this graph G as well. So here we have one possible decomposition of the graph G. We've decomposed it into this subgraph H1 and this subgraph H2. Again, notice that when we union these two subgraphs, we get the original graph G. Also, H1 and H2 have no edges in common, so this is a valid decomposition. And since both of the subgraphs in this decomposition are cycle graphs, we could call this a cycle decomposition. Because of course, we have decomposed G into cycles. But of course, there's more than one way to decompose most graphs. Here I've decomposed G into three path graphs. This beautiful subgraph here, this sort of bucket-shaped subgraph, and then this subgraph here. Again, if we union these subgraphs, we get the original graph G. And these subgraphs have no edges in common. So this is a valid decomposition of G. And since all of these subgraphs are path graphs, we could call this a path decomposition of G. So if we called these subgraphs H1, H2, and H3, we could say that the set containing H1, H2, and H3 is a path decomposition of G. 
So that's pretty cool. We could even get more specific. Suppose we go back up to our first example. Notice in this example that the two subgraphs we decomposed G into are both four cycles. So since both of these subgraphs are isomorphic to the cycle graph with four vertices, we could say that the set containing these two subgraphs is a C4 decomposition of G because all of the subgraphs in this decomposition are isomorphic to the graph C4. And again, that is the four cycle graph. So hopefully all of that gives you a good idea of what graph decompositions are. Here's an example graph to try decomposing on your own. Try to come up with at least one cycle decomposition and one path decomposition of this graph. You might also begin to investigate some graph decomposition questions. Does every graph have a cycle decomposition? Does every graph have a path decomposition? These are questions that you might profit from investigating. Let me know how it goes in the comments, and I'll leave some of my decompositions in the description. With that said, I hope this video helped you understand graph decompositions. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. Blind as bats, it's a sight to see Choirs in four parts